Okay, so this is going to be our first introduction to using AJAX. AJAX is spelled A-J-X, and we're going to be using it to dismiss our marketing message and then kind of set some time period in the future um, that would allow us to, you know, have that marketing message reappear. Um, so what I want you to do is actually open up your marketing views. So within here, we're just going to create a view called dismiss uh, marketing message and it's going to take in a request and this is going to be all done in JSON. So what JSON is, I'm going to go ahead and comment this out for now, but what JSON is, is like when we go to our product, let's say, oh, let me run the server real quick. When we go to a product and we load this page, it is happening in real time, right? So I load the page and it happens. And if I click on add to cart, it reloads the page and then loads into a new page. So um, everything's being reloaded. Now what JSON allows me to do is click something and have something else happen and then w with on the server and then it won't have to reload the page. So it's asynchronous. It's happening all at the same time. So um, it's kind of like if I hit this X button, Granted, JavaScript is removing that, so it's doing that little animation. That's what JavaScript's allowing us to do. Um, and then on top of that, it's going to allow us to send something to the database and then store some data or something like that. And then it will send something back as well without reloading the page. That's something that's really good about an AJAX call um, and using AJAX in general. You'll see this on so many sites like the Facebook like button. A lot of, a lot of times you'll see it add to cart will be done in AJAX. Uh, even showing the cart will be done in AJAX. Like if you went over this, it would show, um, you know, what is actually in the cart, not actually having to click on it, but it will load it up. And then a lot of times you'll see like a, just a little loading cursor and stuff like that. Now we will do more AJAX stuff in the future. So this is really just going to be a basic introduction to it. Uh, but it's going to be useful for us to figure out how we're going to actually use this to where they can demit, dismiss the message, but maybe not permanently dismiss it, just miss, dismiss it for a certain amount of time. And that's what we're going to do. Um, so let's go back into our view. I'm going to uncomment this out. Then we want to check whether or not the request is AJAX. So if request dot is underscore AJAX, um, then we're going to do something. And the something that we're going to do is kind of return JSON data. So JSON comes through and then we're gonna send JSON back. Uh, JSON is a type of structure for data. Um, so it's gonna it's gonna look a lot like our uh, Python context. So we'll actually see what that means in just a moment. Uh, I also wanna do a few more imports here. So import JSON, that's one, and then also HTTP response. Uh, those are the two imports that we're gonna to wanna to have here. So request is data or is um, ajax and then we're going to set a data dictionary this is going to just be a regular python dictionary and then from there we would have to turn that python dictionary into json data and we do that using json.dumps and data so this right here is going to convert this data into json data it's really not a whole lot different but the way the server and the um, client or the browser uses it this is uh, how you actually have to do it, is actual JSON data. So we'll see what it looks like after we will print out JSON data and we'll also print out data uh, just to see kind of what it looks like once we get there. And then we're going to return HTTP response and it's going to be the JSON data and then the content type will be application JSON. Because uh, that's we need to make sure that that the browser knows that um, or the client side that is knows that it's going to be JSON data coming through. OK, so now we have the view mostly set up. It's not finished yet. Um, we do have a few more things that we need to do, uh, such as actually make a URL for this. So let's go ahead and open up our URLs. And uh, down here at the bottom, um, I'm going to change a few things uh, as far as Ajax goes. So let's actually do it right above or right below orders. I'm going to call it Ajax. And then I'm going to do update marketing message. More actually, more specifically, update marketing message wouldn't be the best one. It should be dismiss marketing message. Let's just follow the same pattern. 
dismiss marketing message. Okay, so this is the URL we'll end up using. So we need to do marketing.views.dismiss marketing message and the name of dismiss marketing message. Okay, so now that we've got this, uh, we can actually use this URL to run this data right here. So one other thing is if the request is not Ajax, we will do else we'll raise HTTP 404, which also means we have to import it from our shortcuts. So if it's an Ajax call, then we do it just fine. Otherwise, we're going to raise a 404 error. So if somebody, for whatever reason, knows about this URL, uh, then they have to, uh, then an error is going to happen and it's not going to actually work. Cool. So now we've got a lot of stuff set up. It's pretty much ready to go, except for now we have to do all the stuff on for the JavaScript and on the base templates. So let's go ahead and look at it. First thing I need to check out is I need to make sure that jQuery is coming through, and it is. And then underneath this block script or before it, I'm going to do a new script here. I'll do script and script. And again, I'll do pretty much the same thing here. And this is where we're actually going to be doing a lot of uh, pretty much all of our Ajax stuff for this specific message that we want to get rid of. Um, the reason that we want to get rid of it here or on the base page, right? So we're not using block jQuery to do it is because that if we look at our message, this is going to be on every single page, right? So since it's going to be on every single page, we need to have it on our base HTML so the user will always be able to actually dismiss it. If it's only on one page, then we could use something like this or just block jQuery and make changes like that. Um, so we will see something like that in later videos where we actually use Ajax here. Uh, but for now, we're just going to be using it on every single page. So that Ajax call is definitely definitely going to be there. So to test it working, it's working. We'll just do alert hello and go back into Chrome, do a little refresh. Hello, that means it's working. Every time I do a refresh, it'll do it. Every new page I go to, uh, it will do it. Okay, so now that this part is actually working. Um, so now we actually want to select the button that we're going to be using, which is this button. Now, if you remember, we have two messages or two alert messages. So if I scroll all the way to the top one, this is the marketing message one. So in our button, this button right here, uh, this is the close button. That's going to be that button right there. We're going to add an ID of marketing-message-btn. So this ID is what's going to be unique to that button so we can actually grab it in jQuery. So I'm going to go ahead and copy it and go down into our call here, do a dollar sign, parentheses, quote, do a hash, and then marketing message button. So this is grabbing the ID specifically. The hash is for IDs, and then dot would be for classes. But we want to grab just that one specific one. And then on the action, when it's clicked, we want to run a function. And within that function, we're going to, we're going to do some stuff. Uh, the first thing we'll do is actually run in, uh, have an event being passed as a parameter. So we'll do event.prevent default. And then I'm going to alert hello. Okay, so we do that. Let's do a refresh in here. Prevent default, it says hello. And then it does go away. So it's actually not preventing the default because of how uh, that button is actually set up. So we don't even need this. Um, so that's okay. We don't we don't really need to prevent it from being closed because um, it, It's alright if it does it's okay if it actually closes But we what we want to do is actually remember that it closed and that's why we're doing this Ajax um, All right, so now instead of hello, we're gonna do the Ajax call so we'll do dollar sign dot Ajax and then parentheses inside those parentheses we actually want curly brackets so curly brackets and then I'm going to just enter a couple times and put a semicolon at the end. Now, there's a lot of different parameters that you actually need to provide in here. Um, but there's only a few that you definitely need, but there's a lot more that are available. So we're going to just go off with the definitely for now. And then uh, down the line, we will do more with Ajax 
or in other projects we'll do more with ajax and um, you can see some stuff about it there but what we're going to do is type being post and then we're going to do a url so our url uh, will have to be inside of here somehow and then we're going to do data which is going to be a dictionary and it's going to be json data and then we're going to be doing success being um, some sort of oops not 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 a dictionary but a function and then error also being a function right so what it does here is it's going to send data on a successful send it's going to do a function on a and a unsuccessful send it's going to run an error uh, so in these we're just going to do something simple we'll just do console log success and then the one below it i'm just going to do console log error all right and then the data i'll just say um dismiss marketing being a true and it's lowercase in jquery and then what we're going to do also is csrf token or csrf middle where token we are going to add a quotes double quotes on the outside and then inside of it we'll add the curly bracket brackets and csrf token uh, this is important for when we actually send the data over and we can put this in quotes as well and then the url itself which we'll go to urls.py we're going to copy this name here go back into base and change this to url single quote just like that now make sure these double quotes are on the outside especially with the url and post otherwise you're going to run into some errors uh, so that's it that's the ajax call now the data here could be all sorts of things uh, but we're going to just leave it as is uh, this middleware token actually has to come through otherwise we're going to run into some errors with our ajax in general um, so now we can try this out i'm going to just go ahead and tab the ajax stuff in a little bit and then also tab it in one more time with that just so it's nice and clean and i can read it very well um, all right so now we're going to actually click on the button and see what happens back in our view this is what we've got um, i added success being true because we'll see what that does in just a moment uh, and then i also want to uh or well, let's go ahead and do it so back into chrome do a little refresh in here we've got no, no errors in the console that's what we want to see if i click on x we see success um, so that means that it was it successfully happened the function actually ran and if we look in our terminal we see success being true twice these two show the difference between the python dictionary and a json dictionary so if we look at our view we see here's the python one which we see right here and then the json one is the second one uh, so that's actually what's sent back so the response for this actually sends back some data for us that we can use um, inside of our success function or our error function um, so what i'm gonna do here is just do function data so i'm gonna because it's being passed through once it's sent and it receives something so success means it's received and then something's passed which in this case it's data i'm just calling it data it doesn't have to be named as data but that's what i'm referring to as what's coming back to us and now i'm going to do console log and just do data and of course that's related to that right there put semicolons here let's try that one more time going back into chrome do a refresh in here press x and we see it says object success is true um, so this is showing us that it actually went through and we were able to um, change whatever data we needed now in our case we don't actually have to do any of these things because all this button is really doing is it's just going to the server and we have to do some stuff to the server here um, or at least to our session for our marketing message and with the server stuff happening here we don't actually have to send anything back in our ajax call so this is something where if we had if we were doing add to cart for example so if i went to product 
and I hit add to cart and that was an Ajax call. Well, what we'd want to see happen is the add to cart button maybe would change colors and then this cart up here would turn into a one, right? That's how you would kind of handle a success function later. And if there's an error function, we would probably alert error. So I could just say, we could actually still keep the alert of error going here. Error, something went wrong. So we can keep that alert in there just in case if something actually does go wrong. Like it can't connect to this, the, the, um, the server, the URL, it can't connect to that. Some error happened. There are other ways of handling these errors, but this is a nice, simple way of saying, hey, an error happened, uh, maybe try again later. Please try again later. All right, but our success function, we don't actually have to do anything with, so I'm just gonna leave it empty. Right? I don't actually have to load the data. I don't have to show it. I don't have to say success. I don't have to do any of that stuff because all we're really doing is just adding some new type of session variable to our middleware. And that session variable, what I'm going to add is um, we're going to add a new time. So I'm going to say we want to have a time here that's going to be related to our date and time. It's going to be related to the current time zone. So. This would be the old way of how we would add it. Um, you would to add time together. But now, since we're gonna be using the time zone like this, let's go ahead and copy that and go into uh, our middleware. Paste this right below time, date and time. Now we're gonna just go ahead and do time zone now being like that. And now we have this time delta so we can actually see um, these two working in conjunction with each other. So we have date and time and time zone, and this will give us eight hours ahead of right now. Um, so let's go ahead and look at it. If I do a refresh in terminal, it prints this is eight hours ahead of the current time um, that we have on our machine. So let's actually go ahead and print now, time zone being now. And notice it says 23 hours and 43 minutes. Eight hours ahead of that would be seven hours and 43 minutes, right? So this is now showing us those two differences between the time zones on um, how the database is actually working. All right, in the next one, we'll jump right back into doing this stuff and kind of finishing off this Ajax call as well as um, how we handle the time offset for this marketing message. See you then.